atmosphere detected. This is Handsome Jacks rise to infamy, I suppose. But you don't play as Handsome Jack. You don't play as Handsome Jack. And, and this, is, this brings us to our little, our little joke. So we have four people right. because there are four Borderlands characters in every game. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Elise can be Athena, the gladiator. Uh, ben can be uh, okay. Wilhelm, the enforcer. He's going to become a cyborg eventually. <laughs> Actually, for sure it kind of works, right? <laughs> uh, Rob is already... What? Uh, well, you're Claptrap, I guess. I guess I am Claptrap. Low, low to the ground. and, and <laughs> low uh, to the ground as I Some am. people think you're funny. Some people think you're annoying. Oh, mostly annoying <laughs> if, you go to the, if you go to the board, yes. And that makes you... I guess that makes me Nisha, the lawbringer. So that, that's I'm, perfectly I'm, I'm fine. The, the other female character. Uh, and also, this takes place in a different place. Uh, this is on the moon. The moon. It's like taunted everyone. I guess a lot of people thought you were going to end up there at Borderlands 2 and never right. did. Uh, although the thing is, is they have already kind of given away that you will eventually go to Pandora, probably at the end of the game. Okay. Well, also, don't you, like, travel to different areas of the moon, which somehow look, like, different and unique from right. the others? Well, I mean, I think that's the thing. It's like, we know our moon, and so we kind of assume, yeah. like, oh, oh I boring. know my yeah. moon. Because, like, looking at it, it, looks, <laughs> I know it looks exactly like Pandora, pretty much. That's what like. I've seen. Pretty gray, but it's also like one of the, the thing is like there's no there's no oxygen, so oxygen is actually another bar that you have to worry about. Yep. In the game itself, there's also there's like places where you can create a bubble of oxygen. Right. So that because you have to have oxygen for your fire weapons to right. be effective. Oh right. Oh. Do you know how everyone complains about water levels in video games? Mm -hmm. This just sounds like that, but an entire like game. Like a giant water level. <laughs> yeah. The low gravity element looks really neat, though. I still like watching it. I was like, ah, I still feel like you jump you know, unrealistically far in regular Borderlands games. Right. And I don't know if it's just me, but anytime I play Borderlands, I always feel like I'm never going to clear a jump, but right. then I do. Right. <laughs> like, I don't know if it's just a weird... Like, kind of floaty. It's yeah. Uh, it's one of the things that was kind of funny is, I guess they were submitting builds to Gearbox without telling everything that was in the game. And so somebody was like... Uh, yeah, you know, the, the, the low gravity stuff is cool, but, uh, what, you know, it, it's, it takes a long time to get back down to the ground. And they're like, did you try pushing the melee button? And then it's like, oh, that's down. when you can do the yeah. ground pound. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. that's neat. These characters don't seem to be very connected. You know, the Vault Hunters yeah. all had a, a common goal. Uh, what is the sort of connective tissue between these guys? I mean, these guys are all working on Handsome Jack's team. I mean, they're, they're, they're with Even him. Even Claptrap? I guess yeah. there are multiple Claptraps. Yeah, because, you know, it's Hyperion, right? And Claptrap's right. a Hyperion mm -hmm. thing. Um, so, yeah, you know, it's... Well, I know at one point they're kind of kicked off the base and they're trying to take the base back. And, right. and, and the idea is that, you know, like the reason like Jack is so narcissistic and thinks he's a hero and stuff is because like that was his mindset going in. He was a hero. And it's just like all this messed up stuff that he ends up compromising his morals or whatever and eventually becomes a villain. Right. So it's like the Breaking Bad of video games. Yeah, I suppose. Except there's way more guns. I thought than... you were going to go Darth Vader, but <laughs> <laughs> you went Breaking Bad. <laughs> no, no, I don't like someone. Uh, Are we going to see sirens? Yeah, like they're... Oh, no, that's a good point. Because none of... We like, haven't... Yeah, there's None no, of like us a would siren. be a siren going into this. There's no, there's no siren I love, option. I love the siren. Yeah, I play oh, sirens both only times. Play sirens. Our, our, whoa. <laughs> whoa. whoa. Wait a minute. <laughs> Did we just have a moment here where we all figured out we all play sirens and that's it? Really? So you play sirens? You siren yeah. too? I play siren. The siren is the best. <laughs> the siren is the best because she's... Especially in a team dynamic. Okay, well, now it just got a lot less cool. What do you mean? <laughs> Claptrap, his whole shtick has been, he's pretty incompetent and useless, right? right? Like he gets defeated by stairs. You know, right. so it's like how, what kind of power is he going to have? Uh, what is that obviously be like? he doesn't need oxygen, hopefully. Uh. Yeah, I think that's interesting. So he, I mean, obviously he'll have the oxygen for his backpack, for his jetpack, but maybe like his superpowers just doesn't breathe. Do you think Claptrap could think he needs oxygen? Oh, it's true. It's very possible. <laughs> but he thinks that Claptrap thinks he's a person, so right. he always needs oxygen. Aww. Oh, because he always needs to talk, and if he doesn't have oxygen, whatever's coming out of his mouth doesn't make any sounds. I don't know about that. There's a gag there. <laughs> there is a gag there. You know, I've been playing a lot of Diablo 3 recently because of Reaper Souls, and loot is obviously one of the, the big things about Borderlands, and I think that would kind of get me excited is if they retooled loot a little bit. Yeah. Because, like, in Diablo, one of the new things you can do is if you have a weapon and you like most of its stats, but you don't like one thing, you can change it. 
And I think that would be cool to have a little bit more more nuance with the loot rather than it's just like, okay, does this do more damage or does this have, you know, a cool yeah. elemental effect? I never feel like I get a weapon that like is feels super powerful. Like I feel like I'll get a weapon that I can't use. And then I'm like, oh man, when I can use this, this is gonna be awesome. And then by the time I can use it, I'm like, this weapon stinks. Right. Like, <laughs> but it's because you have other weapons that you like better. Where it's yeah. Like Do you build an emotional attachment to weapons? And then even when they're not that powerful, you're like, oh, I can't. I can't, I can't get, get rid, rid of this. Of it. It's like yeah. ten levels down, but it does this thing where it puts out like one giant bullet that takes up like five bullets and I want it splash damage. I want this Borderlands though to have that one like golden gun weapon that is the most sought after in the universe and you need to do something extraordinary to find it but when you do it is kick ass and it is the best gun ever. That's what I want in this. That's what I had hoped would be happening in 2. Well they, really they sort of had that in 2 in like different places. Like they, yeah. there was the, what was it, the telemarketer, the telephone, something like that. It was like a shotgun that gave uh, a blast in a pulse radius. Oh, okay. Uh, and then there was the... I liked, well, I liked when like, they had the, some of the fantasy theme ones in the Tiny Tina yeah. DLC, where it's like, you, you know, your grenade is now magic missile. Yeah. Was like, that was great. But there were, and it's actually really effective. That was my experience with yeah. it. I, never, I guess he says the thing, like, I never... Like, so, I mean, <laughs> that's sort of the interesting thing for me, is the way Borderlands is designed is, like, it really it works either way as either a group experience or a solo experience. Right. I completely disagree. And I've always played it more on the solo perspective. I mean, I've played with other people here and there, um, but like stuff like the raid bosses, like I just couldn't get into because I'm like, this it's... is just a big freaking bullet sponge. I feel like it, the game is both one and two, although two did a much better job. Uh, they're kind of a slog by yourself. Yeah. Whereas playing with friends, I, I need that interaction. I right. need that sort of... The, even the jokes are somehow funnier with a friend uh, because you can both get that immediate response for each other and I, I think it adds something. Like, And things just take way longer to kill by yourself. I remember in specifically Borderlands 1, there would be bosses that would be fighting them by myself and I'd just be like, oh, this is just a war of attrition. Oh, is you it know? like the Mothra? Yeah. Boss. You hit a cursed pirate and you're alone, you're screwed. Those guys, <laughs> they just... <laughs> Oh, that's the one thing that always bugged me about the DLC is like you could never like find a good difficulty option on Borderlands 2 DLC. It was like yeah. either you go with the normal difficulty where they're capped at like 30 mm -hmm. or you go with hard difficulty where they're like always keeping up with you. And it's like, you know, I just want a, a good difficulty setting that extends from the base of the game that's similar to when I first played through the game. Yeah, because I felt so powerful by the end of the game, and then I picked up the DLC and I was like, I'm so weak, I'm <laughs> so weak. I actually, I really enjoy going to friends' games who are lower level. And then you're leveling them up so fast. And you're, and you're oh, just, yeah. And they're like, oh, this is, this, this is the worst place to go through, and I'm like, I can take care of this. Come with <laughs> me, friend. Come with me, let me go through. And I'm just like wiping the town. It's like, I remember yeah. when this was so tough. I think the most intriguing or interesting thing for me is the idea of just having more verticality in, in the level design and in the combat. You know, being able to like take your jetpacks and go someplace that you don't think has anything up there and then find some kind of secret there. This is super vague, but it kind of brings me back to my earlier point is, you know, this is a new, this isn't Gearbox working on this game. So I guess for me, the feeling I want when I play it is, wow, this is new. This is exciting. This is a different take on Borderlands. Yeah. I think that would get me really excited and very enthused about the game. I, I just sort of dread picking up and being like that deja vu, you know, I don't want that. I just want a really powerful super gun. That's only one of its kind and no one else has it. That's it. <laughs> the end. <laughs> What about you, Rob? Uh, I think, I don't know, I'm, I'm actually kind of curious about the story going into this. I mean, I would like to think this is, I want sort of something like a Suicide Squad, where it's like these guys who are going in, but there's also something sort of sinister about them. Like they're trying to do good, but there's also something evil about them at the same time. I mean, I don't think they've done that with the game as it is. Like you're always like the Vault Hunter. And because of that, you're sort of, you're like, you're helping everyone out. But this time I want to be like, we're helping people out for our own means. Or we're sort of helping people out and then taking whatever we're supposed to give them later on. Yeah. Characters are a bit more nuanced in personality. Exactly. <laughs>